Today we're going to look at multiple events using tables. Multiple events consist of more than one component. A table can be used to determine multiple events with two components. So if one event happens and then the other event, we can have a look at the probabilities combining those two events together. When listing outcomes, so when we look at an outcome, we need to be able to show uh, what the outcome, the first outcome of the first component is and the outcome of the second component. So it's important to be consistent with, consistent with the order. So always going first, the first component, then the second component. Because if I'm flipping a coin, flip, 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 and I uh, flip heads and then flip tails, that's not the same as flipping tails and then flipping heads. Okay, so these are the two components. We will do the, uh, um, it's probably convention to write down the first, com first outcome from the first component um, before the second uh, outcome for the second component. So heads then tails is different to tails then heads. So some experiments are conducted with replacement and others are conducted without replacement. Often uh, flipping a coin, um, because we'll often flip the same coin, um, that often occurs with replacement. We can, we can uh, flip tails and then flip tails again the second time for the second component. But say we have two letters chosen from the word cat without replacement. That means that we're not put, if we're picking them out of a bag, we're not replacing that C again into the bag, so it can't be chosen again the second time. That without replacement means it cannot be chosen for the second component, or it's, it's not influ doesn't influence the second component. So choosing C twice is impossible. So I can't, I can't put my hand in the bag, pick out a C, and then expect to pick out another C if I've not replaced anything in the bag. So that's, uh, you need to make sure that you're looking at whether the uh, experiment's being conducted with replacement or without replacement when you're drawing up your table. So, looking at an example of how to do a table now, uh, if two letters are chosen from the word tree without replacement, so we're not replacing the letters, um, once the T's been chosen, it cannot be chosen the second time. Firstly, list the sample space, so all of the outcomes, um, and do that in a table. Then finding the probability that both letters chosen will be E, and then finding the probability that at least one of the letters chosen will be an E. So our table, we've got the first choice, because we're choosing two letters, our first letter and then our second letter. The letters are all the same, they're, they're not um, two different uh, things, it's not rolling a die and then picking and then flipping a coin or something like that, they're the same set. So here we've got the letters tree that we can possibly choose from for our first uh, choice and then our second choice, um, our second letter. Now I've put X's on the squares that are going to mean that because we're doing it without replacement, so that means if I choose the, the uh, T the first time, it's been removed. It's not being replaced and I can't choose T again. So I can't go T, T. I won't be able to do that. Similarly, I won't be able to go R, R. And here, I'm not going to be able to go E and then pick the same E out because I've already removed it. And the same one here. Okay, so each of the, I've colour coded each of the things to, to hopefully make it easier to see where they come from. So the, uh, the aqua green sort of colour, they're the first letters that are chosen. So this would be choosing R first and then choosing T because the dark, darker blue ones are the second choice, the second um, part, the second component of this experiment. So um, this would be choosing R and then choosing a T. This is choosing a T first and then choosing an R. And this down here is choosing one E and then choosing another E. And I've listed all of the possible outcomes there. We can count the, count the outcomes to see how many there are in total. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There are 12 different outcomes that we can possibly get. Once again, we can't get the same one twice, so there aren't the full 16 outcomes. There aren't the, the because we can't choose um, the T twice. So, the probability that both letters chosen will be an E will be E then E. That will be the outcome that we're looking for. And the only two outcomes that are E then E are these two here. Uh, yes, so it'll be choosing the E 
first from, from this side and then choosing the, the other E there. So there are only two possible ways that can occur. Uh, that seems pretty obvious because if you choose um, one then to get an, another E you have to choose the other E and vice versa. So that's two possible outcomes out of the total of 12. Two out of 12 outcomes, that means the probability is one sixth that that will happen. So what about the probability that at least one of the letters chosen will be an E? Well, and we're not saying it's the first or second, but we can have a look at the outcomes that have E's in them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten outcomes have at least one E. There are two that do not have an E in the outcome. So that's ten out of twelve, which is simplified to five sixths.